Hi there. So today I'm launching a new project um, which involves uh, space exploration using the venerable Microsoft Space Simulator program published in 1994 for DOS. Uh, when this came out uh, back then there was really no competitor to it. There was nothing out there that could approach its capabilities. Um, and it was, in my view, way ahead of its time, but also grossly underappreciated. Perhaps because of its perceived complexity. And I admit that um, if you want to really get into the depth of this program, um, there's definitely some element of uh, learning curve here to be had, uh, particularly in the subjects of uh, astrodynamics and things like that. Um, unfortunately, the manual which I'm showing here um, while presenting good information does not go in enough depth to really allow you to uh, do a lot of uh, realistic uh, mission design and exploration. So to that end um, I will be relying heavily on uh, Nick Dargahi's uh, Microsoft Space Simulator Pilot's Handbook uh, which was published initially on CD-ROM back in the 90s and has been out of print for a while now. However, it is now back in print as a Kindle book on Amazon and you should be able to find it there and I'll leave a link in the description of the video. So, um, what am I planning on doing? Um, at this point, um, it's going to be a freeform um, exploration. Um, we'll start modestly with uh, orbital maneuvers um, and re-entry and then start uh, planning uh, missions to the various planets and moons um, and uh, see where that gets us. Uh, the simulator um, really has a lot of features and um, a lot of uh, exploration is to be had um, using it if one knows uh, what to do or at least has some form of guide. So in order to run the Microsoft Space Simulator, I will be using this custom-built um, vintage PC, which uh, I uh, built from a salvaged uh, 386 computer case, um, consisting primarily of a, an AMD 486 DX4 100MHz CPU, which um, rivals or almost rivals uh, the performance of an early Pentium computer. Along with that it is paired with 48 megabytes of RAM, a Trident Super VGA Visa local bus uh, video card with one megabyte of RAM on board, a Sound Blaster 16 sound card, a multi-IO uh, generic uh, board, um, a 52 time speed CD-ROM and uh, three and a half and five and a quarter inch floppy drives. So um, this system would have been considered a uh, pretty high-end computer um, for the mid-90s and is a perfect setup to run Microsoft Space Simulator from a speed standpoint. Um, it will be connected to a um, standard uh, VGA monitor uh, as you can see here, um, and this one is actually shared um, by my uh, venerable TI 9948 computer, which I still use um, and still experiment with. And you can actually see some of these experimentations in my other videos. Um, however, um, I tried to capture uh, decent images from uh, the monitor, and unfortunately, it uh, did not turn out very nicely. So I decided to use a video capture device uh, shown here, which is a, essentially a PC to video component device. I plug in the uh, VGA output of the computer into it and out comes either component, um, uh, composite or S-video uh, out. So in this case I'm using the S-video out uh, feature and that's connected to a uh, diamond multimedia uh, adapter which takes that S-video input and connects it uh, 
via USB to a PC or laptop in this case um, and uh, I can use then a video grabber to just capture the images or the videos and uh, process them. So that's essentially the uh, setup that I will be using and um, why don't we go ahead and start it up and see how it goes. Okay, so I'm rebooting the computer right now and we're gonna start the simulation shortly. Um, this boot up process may bring up some interesting memories for some of you who are old enough. Uh, we hardly ever see that anymore on modern uh, computers. Uh, it's uh, kind of refreshing to be honest with you to see what's actually going on under the hood. In any case, here we are at the C drive and we're going to go ahead and switch to the D drive um, where our simulation resides. I have actually an extra drive in the computer uh, on a, an IDE compact flash card which I use as a backup um, and uh, this is where I'm going to be uh, saving my uh, my uh, simulation uh, just in case uh, the computer crashes. I don't want to lose all my uh, situation files. So let's go ahead and switch to the uh, directory where the space simulation resides <coughs> and start Microsoft Space Simulator. All right, here it is. And we are now on the main screen. So what I'm going to discuss today is uh, just uh, simply how to uh, do the initial setup for the uh, simulation in order to best performance. So we go into the options and then preferences. First thing I do is usually turn off music and just select sound effects. Um, the program has a decent selection of uh, background music as a matter of fact. However, um, you know, you really get tired of it after a while. I mean, who wants to listen to the Blue Danube over and over and over? Um, while playing, um, it really gets tiring. So sound effects are probably your best option. Um, and with this setting, you get essentially just the engine noises and um, the docking sounds. Next up is the precision. Uh, it needs to be on the highest setting in order to have the most accurate calculations within the program. This can certainly affect your uh, trajectories or orbital maneuvers, etc. So it's really important to have it at this setting. Skill level should be on advanced in order to get the maximum realism out of the simulation. Um, I do not use joysticks in this uh, program. Uh, I use the keyboard as my main control input. Um, I just find the joysticks to be cumbersome and clunky. Uh, the mouse I just use for menus. Uh, like I said, the keyboard is my main uh, input entry. Um, labels I don't use um, except on the map. Um, rendering I use the maximum settings. My rig can handle it and this is easily done also under DOSBox. And scenery um, I uh, select all objects except constellation boundaries which are not realistic obviously. And then I leave out the Milky Way and the reason for that is if we look here we, our frame rate currently is about 4 frames per second which is actually pretty good for the simulation on a vintage rig. However, watch what happens if I select the Milky Way, and it's really pretty. I mean, let's face it, it's really nice. However, look what happens to your frame rate. It drops into the three range. So it's a full one frame drop per second um, if we have the Milky Way on. So, I mean, this is nice if you want to take a quick snapshot of the screen, but for uh, regular play, it's probably best to take it off. There we go, and see again, our frame rate jumps back, jump back up to four. All right, so that really should be it as far as the initial setup um, of the program. For each situation or mission, we may have uh, certain things to, to do as far as setting uh, uh, up the, uh, the variables. But uh, for general startup, this is it. I should mention that we do not need really a uh, vintage rig to run the Microsoft Space Simulator. It runs perfectly fine in DOSBox under uh, modern Windows, even Windows 10. And this is actually uh, the, uh, the way I run it to test certain trajectories, uh, create missions, and practice maneuvers. So yeah, you do not need a rig for this, and you can easily follow along just using a, a regular PC. 
All right, so next video is where the fun begins. Um, we're going to start with uh, doing some orbital uh, maneuvers and re-entry. So see you then.